Well, hello, good morning, welcome to Sailing Madness. We've got an early start today because we're going sailing. Now, I am a little nervous for a couple of reasons. First of all, I've not sailed for about three months, so I am going to be a little rusty. And secondly, I'm doing this completely solo as well. So am I completely mad? I don't even have the dog with me today. So what could possibly go wrong? Right, okay, so I've got quite a bit to do before we can slip the lines, but first of all, I think I deserve a captain's breakfast. <laughs> Okay, so apart from just breaking the yolk in the frying pan, here's the perfect start to a sailing day. Just one more thing to add. Okay, here's the big question. What do I put on my breakfast this morning? Do I go for brown sauce or ketchup? Now, last time I filmed making breakfast on a boat, I put ketchup on my breakfast. I actually like both. And I got so many comments from people, probably mostly American, saying, why the hell did you do that? Um, I think putting ketchup on, on your breakfast in the morning is a very British thing. So for anybody who's listening and watching in America, just for you today, I'm going to go for the brown sauce. Time to tuck in. You don't want to watch me eat this. It won't be a pretty sight. It's going to be messy. Oh, by the way, I forgot to ask you, what do you think of that new intro that I played at the beginning of this episode? Should we keep it? Should have been it? Let me know in the comments below. Right, I've done the engine checks and I've tidied up down below. Now we're going to do things up here before we're ready to slip the lines. Okay, so that's the engine running. Gonna leave that running now for 20 minutes, half an hour as I get the rest of the jobs done. But I think first of all, I probably need to get changed because it's still winter here in the UK. Top temperature today, according to the weatherman, is gonna be about 11 degrees. And I think to go sailing in shorts and just a little shirt in 11 degrees of heat, or lack of it, is probably a bit foolhardy. So let's go and get changed. Ah, that was quick. I've even got my hat ready. Right, so there's still a few jobs I need to do before we can slip the lines. I need to adjust the dinghy because that's been at an angle on the back of the boat in order to drain any rainwater out of it. That needs to be raised up before we set sail. Uh, some halyards need changing and sorting out some other lines up on the mast. I need to disconnect the power and then get the lines ready for slipping and then we're good to go. Now one thing I always do before I leave the dock, especially when I'm doing something solo, is I always get the anchor and the windlass ready. Just in case the engine cuts out, I want to be able to deploy that anchor very, very quickly. If I've got to faff around in an emergency, trying to find the remote control and powering it on down below at the chart table on the fuse panel, then that is going to add vital seconds to the emergency situation. So I always get the anchor ready, I get the remote control plugged in, I get it powered on and I untie the anchor ready to go should I need it. If I do stay out tonight I'm going to need the anchor anyway so I might as well do it now and this is just an extra safety precaution because as you know around North Wales and especially getting out of Conway Marina there's a lot of sandbanks and there's a certain channel you've got to go through and if your engine fails and you're close to a sandbank you know before you know it you're going to be on it. So to have the anchor ready for an emergency I think is a prudent safety thing. Right, last few checks done and we are ready to slip the lines. Just 
Right, so we're out the channel. Let's get the boat into the wind and let's get the head sail out. There's going to be a lot of flapping around, a bit of noise. That's normal. Right, so we're sailing, just got the head sail out at the moment and uh, typically as soon as we got the sails up the wind picked up a little bit so uh, we're cruising along quite nicely and one thing I did before I left was I made a nice cup of coffee so I'm going to enjoy that now and then decide what I'm going to do and where I'm going to go. Do I stay up for the night or do I head back to Conway Marina before the gate closes at about 10 past 2 this afternoon? Well typically it looked like it was going to start to rain, so I put my coat on. And now it looks like the sun's coming out again. <laughs> Do you remember this happened in Scotland? If you watched our previous videos from last year, when Rob and I were in Scotland, every time I put this on, the sun came out. Every time I took it off, it rained. Right, so I've been out for about an hour now, and a decision has been made. I'm going to stay out tonight and go back to the marina tomorrow, so that means I need to find somewhere to anchor this evening. Now, I've got a couple of choices. I can anchor in the pool off Bulmaris, been there a few times, and I could go a little bit further around Anglesey to Pont Linus, and I think that's where I'm going to go because the winds are coming from a kind of southwesterly direction, and I think it's going to be a little bit more sheltered in Pont Linus tonight. So uh, that's where I'm going to be heading for today. I'm going to be doing a little bit of sailing, mucking around with a bit of sail trim, um, because if you watched our earlier episodes from our Scotland trip last year, uh, Robin and I were talking about how to trim a sailboat to get the, the best performance from the, the available winds that you've got. And uh, we were trying all sorts of different things and uh, nothing seemed to work. Well since then, over the winter, I've become obsessed with sail trim. Not because I want to get into racing or anything like that, but I just want to be able to squeeze an extra knot or half a knot from the wind. Because on a long passage, an extra knot or even a half a knot on a passage that's 24 hours is going to shorten your journey time by a considerable amount. It doesn't really matter so much if I'm just pottering around in the bay like I am today, but I want to learn how to do it and I want to learn what's best. And there's so many different things about backstay tension and forestay tension and halyard tension and all this other stuff. And I've created a bit of a cheat sheet because over the winter I, I did do a lot of studying of this. I read lots of books, I watched lots of YouTube episodes and I think I've come up with a little cheat sheet that I'm going to use and play around with today. So I've printed it off and this is for when we're on a reach, which we are today. So we've got all the different settings for light, medium and heavy winds, um, what the goal is and what the backstay, vang, outhaul, genoa car and travel attentions all should be. So I'm going to play around with the settings based on what I've put on here and see if it makes any difference to our speed. Right, so what it's saying here for the head sail is the backstay should be on kind of a medium tension. Well, I know I need to adjust that because it's dead light at the moment. The vang, I need to increase the vang and the halyard tension to remove any horizontal wrinkles in the mainsail. Uh, there's no horizontal um, wrinkles, so we're gonna leave that as it is. Uh, the outhaul slightly on to flatten the lower part of the main. Well, I think that's, yeah, I think that's just about right. So I think it's just the backstay that I need to adjust. Well, we're doing 4.3 knots through the water. Let's see if uh, adjusting the backstay is gonna make any difference. Right, already that has made a difference. Look, 4.95 knots there. And that's just for adjusting the backstay. Looks like that cheat sheet could really come in handy. You know, sailing solo is quite special, actually. Not many people do it. Even people with sailing boats that sail with friends and family don't tend to sail by themselves. And I can see why they don't do it, because it is quite nerve-wracking at times. Because you've only got you, yourself to fend for, and it's only your decision. You haven't got someone else with you that might have a different opinion on something that might say no we need to do this we need to do that 
it's just you, the boat and the sea. But I'm loving being out here today. The weather's not particularly nice, but you know, we got a steady 12, 13 knots of breeze. And I'm glad I made the decision to stay out overnight as well. Well, I am at the moment. <laughs> I might regret it when the boat is moving around lots in the night and I can't sleep, but we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. Right, we've been going a couple of hours now. The autopilot's doing a great job. I think it's time we made a cup of tea. Right, so we're making good progress. Um, Point Linus is just about over there. You can just about see it. Um, it's about eight miles away and we're doing four and a bit knots. So it's still a good two hours before we get there. Uh, the thing is though, we're going in that direction. We need to go that way. Now, the wind is coming from over there. So that means I'm gonna to have to jibe the boat through the wind in order to head towards our destination. So I'm gonna finish my tea. I'm gonna pull in the main sheet jive the boat through the wind and then hopefully set a course that's going to more or less take us to our destination and then the plan is I'll drop the hook it's still only sort of mid after early afternoon so have some lunch I'll see what the swell is like and make a decision as to whether I'm going to stay there the night or try somewhere else but I think because the wind's coming from this direction the, the point sticks out big big cliffs on one side they're going to protect me from any, any wind. It's just whether or not there's any swell coming through, but we'll see. I'm not going to rush. I'm going to drink my tea first. It's still a bit hot. Right, it's time to jibe. Easy that, wasn't it? Easy and no drama. Right, so it's been a really nice sail so far. We're about a mile and a half off Point Linus. So the plan is, start the engine in a couple of minutes, turn the boat into the wind, put the head sail away, and then motor into our anchorage for the night. And hopefully the rain will stop. <laughs> but it's been a lovely sail. Really have enjoyed it. Apart from the weather, of course. But I don't mind the cold just don't want to get wet and cold at the same time. Right, as you can see, it's just starting to get dark and it's still raining. In fact, it's been raining non-stop since we dropped the hook about four hours ago. But uh, still glad I'm here. Oh, someone's shouting at me. Did you hear that? I think someone was shouting at me then. Or maybe they're calling a dog. <laughs> Same thing. But... Are you talking to me? You won't see him, but he's over there. He's wearing a red coat. Anyway, as I was saying, 
It's been raining since we dropped the hook four hours ago and I think on the way back it's going to be a little bit choppy tomorrow because the winds are almost heading from the sort of easterly direction which is where we want to go and we're going to have a bit of wind over tide. So it could be a bit of a choppy journey back but that's for tomorrow. I'm going to have something to eat now and I'm going to have a beer and I'm going to chill out. One thing I did forget about this anchorage was that uh, there's no mobile phone signal so uh, I'm going to have to read a book tonight instead of surf the internet. But anyway, still glad I came out. It is a bit chilly. So let's get down below and let's let's have a beer and something to eat. Let's have some light in the matter, shall we? Well, good morning everybody. It's very early. It's 5.45. I've just woken up. I've just got out of bed. And to be honest, I didn't get much sleep last night. It was a little bit rolly here in the anchorage. The wind did pick up in the middle of the night. Um, I did pop my head out of the window or out the uh, companionway a few times just to uh, check on things. But we've not moved an inch, I don't think. Well, the anchor hasn't moved an inch. We've obviously moved around the anchor. So let's take you outside and let's uh, see what the weather's like out there, shall we? Yeah, we're in exactly the same position we were last night. That's good, isn't it? Let's go for a little walk around the deck. Right, well it's a bit chilly out here. Doesn't look like there's going to be any sun today, but the forecast is for no rain either. Well, that was the forecast last night anyway. Right, let's go back down below. Because it is a bit chilly, and now I've got wet feet. Should have put shoes on first, what an idiot. Uh, yes, I definitely should have put shoes on before doing that. Right, so the plan is to uh, get out of here as soon as I can. Gonna have a cup of tea first, that's gotta be the first job of the day. Um, the plan, the cell plan at least, is, um, well this is what I wrote last night, okay. Now the gate at uh, Conway, or the seal gate, opens 8.23 and then goes back up at 14.40. So that's my window for getting back into the marina. Uh, now slack water today at Conway is, uh, or high tide is 11.26. So slack water is sort of half hour either side of that, so say 10.56 or 11.56. So that's when I want to be getting back into the marina. Um, so that means I probably need to be away here by seven o'clock. You know, whilst we're waiting for the kettle to boil, I've got to say I'm well impressed with the new lithium battery that I fitted onto this boat. It's only 400 amp hour, but as you can see, the battery's been on all night. We've still got 81% charge left. Now, bearing in mind, I've had the heater on all night. I've had the chart plotter on all night. I've had the fridge on all night. I've had the anchor light on all night. I've had all my phones, iPads and cameras all on charge overnight and that's lasted pretty well I'm impressed with that so when we get going the engine's going to boost that 81% back up probably to 100% as we get out of here I've got the solar uh, the wind generator has been on all night as well so that's been putting a bit of charge back into the system so yeah well impressed love it if you haven't got lithium on your boat you need it now, I'm not sure how clear you're going to see this but I've just downloaded the latest wind and as you can see, we've got some nice easterlies blowing through. And what direction do we, do we need to go in? Yeah, east. So as you can see, the white dot is where we are. And the little green dot is where we're going. Um, so it's, it's about 15 knots. So it's nice sailing, but we're going to be kind of beaten into it. Um, I don't want to be beaten into it for too long if it's going to take us too long to get back because we're on a deadline, as you know. Um, if we were just going to be able to get back at any time, I'd just tack back through that and... Uh, take all day at it if I needed to but I don't have that luxury today because uh, I've got sill gates to contend with so uh, so that's just motivating me now to get uh, out of here as quickly as possible I'm just going to drink my tea and then I'm going to get ready bring the anchor up and we'll be on our way and uh, last time we had easterlies and I came here on the way back it was really choppy um, we're going to have wind over tide as well because the tide's going to be coming in uh, the tide is going to be heading west so uh, it's going to be a bit choppy, I think, on the way back. So I think I'll uh, make sure I put my full wets on before we go. 
Right, so we're underway and as I thought, it is a little bit choppy out here. It's because we've got a little bit of an easterly wind and we've got a tide going westerly. So uh, that's wind against tide. And uh, that's why we're rocking around all over the place. Anchor came up absolutely fine. Um, didn't film it because I knew it was going to be like this when we got out here. So uh, I didn't want to be faffing around with cameras. <clears throat> and it's, it's quite a nerve wracking thing when you're on your own and you're bringing your anchor up. When you know you you are kind of when you know the anchor is off the seabed and it's still coming up and you know from that moment you're you're drifting and you're quite close to rocks it's quite a race against time to get the anchor in its cradle and then get back onto the helm to get the boat under control and motor away from danger so i didn't put that on camera didn't film that i think i had to prioritize of keeping the boat safe at that point but here we are we're heading back to conway albeit it's a little bit of a bumpy ride, but I'm still loving it. Right, I've been going about an hour now and the wind is well and truly on the nose. So there's going to be no sailing today. Lots of ships to avoid though. At anchor, waiting to get into Liverpool. Big old red one over there. Would you believe it just as we get into the channel to get back into Conway the sun looks like it's going to try and come out I'm not going to complain about that well we're nearly back no sailing on the way back we're heading straight into the wind all the way it was quite choppy till we got around Puffin Island it's calmed down a little bit here but uh, that wind is pretty cold it's coming from the east Whoa. so I've just got the lines ready the fenders were already ready or even already ready because <laughs> I didn't even bring them in when we left yesterday I'm a bad sailor aren't I? I'm a bad sailor or a lazy sailor right I'm going to try something I've never tried before coming in because on the chart plotter I've got all the waypoints plotted for the channel so I'm going to see if the boat will take its, itself in not sure if it will work but uh, I'll keep a close eye on it and see if we can do it on the autopilot all the way in Right, so the autopilot has successfully taken us between the first two marker boys at the start of the channel. I got a feeling this might work, you know. Let's see how we do on the rest of it though. This chart plotter is doing a really good job taking us through this channel. I've only had to make a couple of minor alterations to the helm and apart from that, the boat has literally just taken herself in. I'm well impressed. Conway Marina, Conway Marina, this is sailing vessel Kudos, sailing vessel Kudos, over. Kudos, Conway Marina, good morning. Good morning Conway, this is uh, Kudos, um, I'm just um, about half a mile away from the uh, entrance to the marina, uh, just requesting permission to enter and secondly, because um, I'm solo, is there anybody available that can give me a hand with lines when I get on the dock please, over. Right, okay, no problem. I'll give you a shout then. Thank you. Kudos out. Thank you so much. Bye, 
safe. Don't make a habit of it. You can't do it every time. Can you? No. Can you imagine 550 boats? Can you help me in? Can you help me in? Help me in. We have got a marina to run as well. Oh, my life's going to go. When I'm on my own on the weekends, what am I going to do, mate? Truthfully. No, yeah. And at the minute, you've got Easter weekend coming up. We just finished the dredging programme. Hoist driver's gone on holiday. Second hoist driver's gone on holiday at the same time. Short staffed. So, oh, yeah. You're lucky, I've just finished some of the boats. So. That's it, we are back. He had a bit of a whinge. But we're nice and tied up. Back on the slip. About you, but I'm ready for a cup of tea. First of all, though, I'm going to sort the lines out, get the power back on, and then I'll put the kettle on. Right, well. Right, well, that just about does it for Dave for today. Thank you so much for coming with me for my little overnighter, my first solo sail in over a year. Thoroughly enjoyed it, can't wait for the next one. Can't wait to get out again sometime very, very soon. Remember, if you've enjoyed this video, and let's face it, if you're still here at the end, you must have enjoyed it. So please give me that thumb, hit that like, share the love. Please subscribe, hit that notification bell. And if you're feeling really generous and would like to support future episodes, please consider becoming a patron. All the details are in the box below. Until next time, from me, Dave, take care. Thanks for watching. See you soon. Bye-bye.